Today's topic is going to be about sophistication. My philosophy teacher was obsessed with this topic, always making sure to mention it at least once in every single class. And for us as teenagers, we thought that this was very controversial to us. We wanted to follow the grain, we didn't want to be sophisticated, and initially we associated the idea of being sophisticated with sitting in the back of a limousine and being suave and wearing suits and being a real preppy person who nobody liked. When really, fundamentally, the idea behind sophistication is that one is open to different experiences. That's all it is. The only reason why sophistication is associated with wealthy people is because wealthy people are sophisticated. They're open to different experiences, at least most of the time. Let's say Mr. 2015 Muskshill, who held his position in Tesla for many, many years, is able to enjoy a much more free life than most people, because he has money and so thus he can afford more time and freedom to just blow on all sorts of different things. Mr. Muskshill is free to sit home and play Gran Turismo 7 all day, dig into Elden Ring and its lore, or spend his time going to places like Sicily, enjoying the local cultures, exploring the amazing beaches, going on beautiful dates, or listening to the interesting music that's only specific to certain regions. Mr. Mushell has the opportunity to dig as deep as he wants into the rabbit holes of the world, and as he digs more into these rabbit holes, he learns more things about the world and is able to explore even more. He in some sense creates this assembly line of a sophistication. As he learns more about the world's cultures, as he learns more about the world in general, the world wants to teach him more about it. His interestingness makes more people want to associate with him. Because of the broad set of stories and experiences in Muskshill's emotional lexicon, people want to associate with Muskshill because he's an interesting person. Friends invite him to hikes and to hang out at cafes so he can compare the places of which they're used to to the places that he's been to. Mr. Muskshill, how do the cafes in New York compare to the cafes in Italy? Musk show also being quite the interesting romancer as well, as he certainly knows how to turn his dates into an adventure. Him bringing his beautiful date Isabella Udafula to that interesting restaurant that gives the chocolate crocodiles at the end. And then he decides to cool off the evening by bringing her to that cute underground skating place on Robson that all of the couples go to after dinner. Mr. Mushio loves an interesting life, and that's most importantly because he's an interesting person. Someone who's willing to see the world as a playground, and other people want to do that as well. But before we get into how he does that, one must understand the contrast to Mr. Mushio. The person who represents the complete antithesis of Mushio's values, and that is Aunt Timothy Ulofula, the boring zoomer who spends all of his time playing Call of Duty and maybe a little bit of Fortnite. Let's go over the values that define Timothy as the antithesis of a sophisticated person. First and foremost, Timothy is arrogant. He's not willing to try new experiences, even in regards to the gaming realm, and he's obsessed with gaming. He doesn't want to try experiences that don't relate to, let's say, his first-person shooter obsession, because that's not what his friends try. He doesn't want to challenge what his friends do. He doesn't want to try things that are different, and so his scope in regards to gaming is going to be a very boring scope, or a very specific scope to put it in more diplomatic terms. He won't be able to try the different RPGs that define the years that he will live through. He doesn't want to try the different platformers, the different shooters, the different types of games from different parts of the world that will give him an interesting scope of the world. Games that will perhaps bring up social issues that can bring him to thought, give him discussions when he hangs out with his friends or on dates. He's not able to do any of those things because he is just a typical boring person. He is not a sophisticated person. Now furthermore, in regards to film, it's the same way. He'll only watch the latest Marvel film, and although that's a fine thing if he wants to relate to his friends, if he wants something deeper in regards to relationships, he's going to have a lot of difficulty finding relation with someone who doesn't necessarily find him very interesting. Further, in addition to trips and other things like that, one is not likely to travel. Timothy Ulufula doesn't want to travel. That's boring. Why waste his money? Maybe he might travel to some sort of a convention. Maybe he might travel to some sort of gaming event or something. But why would he bother traveling for some other reason? As he gets into relationships, he finds difficulty in those relationships because he's not an interesting person. People will label him a spaz. People will label him someone who's not going to necessarily be successful in those realms. And he begins to accept those conclusions because what other people think of him defines him. He doesn't have a personality because he hasn't had the opportunity to develop a personality by having a broad set of experiences in order to define himself by something specific. He doesn't have anything interesting about him. He's just one of the many guys in the many groups of the many people who seems to fit in a category that isn't necessarily very interesting or very stand outish. He's only going to be defined by the other adjacent aspects to him, and if he's fine with that, perhaps that's the best he's going to do. But if he's not fine with that, he's going to be a very miserable person. He's going to see others who surpass him, and he's going to try to define them by their adjacent qualities. Joe Blow is more successful than me because he's taller than me. Jim Blow is more successful than me because he has a nicer face than me. Anthony Blow is more successful than me because his family comes from a lot of money and they're able to buy their way into a lot of successful spaces. 
Ultimately speaking, everything is an excuse. Instead of finding excuses to delve deeper into the world, to be able to compete with these other people head to head, he only sees himself as one who only belongs on the sidelines because one, that's how his friends help define him, and two, that's how he sees the world. That's always how he's seen the world. He's never seen the world as a main player, but he's more so someone who's out in the audience, shoveling in his hot dog as he gets closer and closer to death, as he gets closer and closer to poor health, as he gets closer and closer to isolation. And those are all things that will continue to define him as he gets deeper into life, as he begins to see his own mortality, as he begins to finally embrace the idea of sophistication. And like most people, he eventually does get to that free point when he's old, when nothing really matters anymore, when he's free to blow all of his time and money at the penny slots, going deeper and deeper into old age as people seem to care less and less about the way at which he is. And as everyone else begins to care less and less about him, he finally also begins to care less and less about himself, at least in the more self-conscious aspects. He's able to say the things at which he wished he could always say. He's able to go to the places at which he wished he could always go. He's able to have some sense of financial security that he's always wanted as he starts to build up his financial intelligence on how he's going to manage his retirement money. And thus, as he begins to focus on these aspects, he starts to live a more sophisticated life, when it doesn't really matter anymore. He can now travel to different parts of the world when his bones begin to ache. He can now tell the jokes and say the things to the people he's wanted to say things to that he's always wanted to say, while at the same time coming off as a crazy old man who no one is taking seriously. He can now have all of the experiences and set himself apart from his friends because many of his friends are now dead. Nothing matters anymore because he is someone who has wasted his life. And now when he starts wanting to live his life, it becomes clear to him that he's only a few years off from death. But really, how could one define one's life as unsuccessful if they didn't really know what they missed out on? And the only way really to define those terms is to compare Timothy Ulafulo's life with the life of Mr. Musk show. Both men see the world as a very big place, but by contrast, Mr. Ulafula sees the world as a big scary place. He breaks it down into simple to understand qualities because he wants to be able to avoid aspects in the world. He finds stereotypes, he finds certain generalizations about certain regions, about certain cultures, about certain ideas and business and the list goes on that make it more difficult for him to learn things. He doesn't want to learn more about the stock market because the stock market is full of greedy people. And the only people who do well in the stock market are greedy people. And he's heard lots of stories on Wall Street Bets of people who've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, because they've invested into the stock market. He doesn't want to get into dating because the only people who do well in dating are chads. People like him don't do well in dating. They're the people who get nothing. You know, 90% of girls date the top 10% of guys. You know the meme. And thus, as a byproduct, he doesn't bother learning anything about dating. He continues to live off and hang out with his friends, play Call of Duty, get deeper into his gaming world, and continually run on the hamster wheel of nothingness. Whereas by contrast, Mr. Muskshill sees the world as a big, exciting place. He doesn't break down the world into smaller, easier to understand qualities because he wants to write things off, but because he wants to better engage with the world. If he wants to go on vacation with his beautiful girlfriend Isabella Uladula to Italy, he actually just looks at the things at which they want to do. Then he looks at the locations that offer those things, then breaks down the hotels, the rates at which they charge, and thus books the vacation. Well, he also needs to write up a budget, but because he has financial intelligence, as he's been open to learn about the financial strategies to having a good portfolio and handling his wealth appropriately, he's able to draw up a budget and able to draw from his passive income, which he's been able to generate from his financial intelligence, to pay for his vacation. Sophistication creates more sophistication. A good life creates a better life. A study of how Mr. Mushill dealt with his problems in life underlines how he was able to look at things from a more whole perspective. Initially, when he didn't have very much money, he looked at the general market, all of the baskets of goods that were offered in different asset classes, the understanding of tax law and how that factors into one's returns with investments. And so thus, he went to various different publications and looked at the main books that most people who invest in the markets read. He was able to create a narrow down list of the various different books that were recommended, then add them to his audible wish list. And he creates an infrastructure for his learning. When he's bored and has nothing to do, he can listen to an audiobook. But it doesn't end there. He's also created infrastructures for other things. When he needs to work out, he actually has created a workout plan for himself, as in he took the time to go on YouTube and look at the various different workouts he could work on at home, the equipment that he could purchase that would help him build his muscles and create some sort of strength in himself. He works the bejeebus out of his job and gets other part-time so he can diversify the stream of revenue coming in from different jobs as well. He then pours the money from those various different jobs into his investment accounts, and he has investment accounts because he bothered to build up some financial intelligence. He invests generally in S&P 500 funds because the S&P 500 is a collection of generally the 500 biggest companies in the United States, the most profitable generally. 
And thus, he's able to use the financial sophistication of the US economy, the might of the entire US economy, to pour cash into his accounts. But he doesn't stop there, does he? He wants to further increase his financial sophistication. And so thus he begins to invest time and money into learning about the real estate market, using sophistication as a broader tool to be able to understand as many aspects as possible about the general real estate market. So when he does invest in the real estate market, he's prepared, using seminars to get a general idea of the local markets at which he's dealing with, in addition to a hands-on approach, using uh, audiobooks to get a general approach to the real estate markets, and to get the general concepts down of all of the things that most real estate investors ought to know. By doing this, he's able to have a general base of knowledge for his finances, and as he improves and his finances get stronger, he's able to have more of a base when he tries other things. He has funding for when he tries other projects, projects that, let's say, would relate more to the traditional aspect of sophistication, aka going out and doing fancy things. Because Mr. Musk's show was open enough to try different experiences, aka he was sophisticated, he is now able to do all sorts of different things. For one, he has financial security, and as good creates good, more experiences create more experiences. With financial security, he can now do all sorts of different things. He can go to all of the weird, obscure restaurants in town, so when he goes on dates, he actually has cool, weird places to bring them to kind of give a vibe. In addition to this, as he has more experiences, he becomes more interesting. The more interesting the experience, the more interesting the person becomes, and the excitement starts to breed further excitement. Suppose Mr. Musk Shill hangs out at a chill bar in New York. An obscure bar, but a very chill bar. He meets this really interesting girl by the name of Molly Bagali at the bar. She's just chilling out there, and she recently broke up with her boyfriend, who's a jerk. They initially have a very chill conversation about Netflix shows, and then that chill conversation moves into a conversation about Emily in Paris, another Netflix show that's quite chill. And then they start talking about that Vineyard episode that I think is quite chill too. In addition to that, they start realizing that, hey, maybe they ought to visit a vineyard. And in fact, Mr. Muskshill actually has an understanding that there's a vineyard not far from there. He had hung out there the other weekend because he heard that they had some really good wine and that they had some really interesting activities and historical activities around the vineyard. And so thus, why don't they just hang out there next week? Oh, Mr. Muskshill, aren't you a player? Well, ultimately speaking, the general idea here is that Mr. Muskshill has a general understanding of sophistication. He's an interesting person who you want to know what he's doing, and when you think about what he's doing, you always kind of have a wonder of what he's doing, because he has an unpredictable aspect to him. And it's not because he's just naturally that way, but because he's actually taking the time to becoming an interesting person, to learning about the world and trying the different things at which the world has to offer allowing the experiences of the world to pile in in his personal lexicon of experiences, and thus those experiences lead to more experiences, compounding returns just like his portfolio, which is managed quite well, I must admit. And so ultimately speaking, Mr. Muskshill is able to build up a very interesting life for himself because he's sophisticated, because he's opened himself up to different aspects of the world. And that's all of my point is with this video. Sophistication, opening oneself up to different opportunities and experiences, enjoying the goods and bads of those experiences, but for the most part being open to trying new things so one is able to profit from those new things, so one is able to spread the, the value of those new things to other people and create lots of value in general. Now anyways, I hope one enjoys this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you did enjoy it, and I wish you all the best. Take care.